This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice. So you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Hello, old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is top U.S. real estate appreciation markets for 2018. But before we get started, I just want to say, hey guys, uh, welcome. I hope you are all moving forward on your 2018 strategic plans, uh, that you're, uh, you know, just, just forging forward on your goals here and finding great properties and, and, uh, making these awesome purchases that, uh, will definitely, uh, generate cash flow and ultimately create a legacy for you in your real estate investing portfolio that, uh, Hopefully, we'll, we'll grow and grow and grow. And along those terms here, uh, I, I just want to say, too, uh, to those that I have been uh, talking to and meeting with or, or corresponding with, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, it's been great uh, hearing some of the successes that you guys are having out there, as well as being a, a part of helping you and, and moving you into your plans and implementing these things that uh, sometimes are hard to start. But once you get started, it's just, it's so worth it. Now, I do have a confession to make, and I got to tell you, and uh, you're probably wondering, Bill, didn't you recently have an episode, True Confessions of a Real Estate Investor? Well, yeah, uh, but we confess a lot on this show, so here's another one. Um, there's a lot of younger listeners out there, and I'm realizing this as I'm you know, talking with you guys and, and making contact. Um, I, I might even say, and again, I, I don't have the stats. I don't know exactly who our listeners are, but... Um, just in just in the contact that I have, uh, I'm realizing that there are a lot of you in your your 20s, 30s, and 40s, and um, and and probably more so than our 50 plusers. Although that that audience is growing every day, but uh, you know, and I, I have to say, I'm I'm jealous of you guys, the younger ones out there, because. Uh, you know, if I could have started at your age, wow! I mean, uh, I would have been so much further along, and and it would have. Uh, been a different situation. I could basically say that if I started younger, it would be a more organic growth process. And um, and I'll try and explain that a little bit, is that when you have the pressure of time, you can see how things cash flow, you can see how appreciation grows, um, but it's more organic when you're younger because you, you can you, you know, those things are just happening over time. You buy right, you're going to see that property go up in value. You're going to see great things happen. Um, it happens over time. But because of my age, as I'm starting later, you know, you need to force appreciation. And I know many of you are saying, well, yeah, that's great. We, we want to do that too as we're younger. And that's the great thing, especially working with multifamily, is that, that you're able to force appreciation more. And you can even force cash flow as you decrease expenses and increase income. But at the same time, time is your adversary. When you're older, I don't want to be doing this, you know, into my 80s here. I really want to get this done within my six-year six time period. But, you know, there is, are some advantages where you can watch things grow organically and, and begin to um, increase in value to be able to leverage that that property when it has that extra appreciation that you can tap into and to purchase your, your properties. But, um, yeah, this is something that I'm, you know, I'm learning as I go along and, uh, and I have to be a quick study because uh, of the time factor. So for those younger out there, you know, do your 20 year time projections and, and work with that. Now, today we're talking about appreciation markets. Okay. And this is different than necessarily uh, an emerging market. An emerging market is very 
very much uh, the same in that you're monitoring the appreciation of properties. In other words, property values and where they're projected to go up and buying on this bell curve, you know, at the base of the curve or even midway on that uh, bubble uh, to be able to uh, leverage the appreciation um, and to be able to sell when the appreciation's high, when you've picked up your top value. Well, this data I, I uh, compiled uh, from a guy named Ken Wade at uh, housingalerts.com, and uh, his whole focus is appreciation. He really thinks it's a mistake to buy uh, for cash flow. And well, as you know, those that have been listening to the show, um, we believe cash flow is king, and I still do. But uh, I understand you know, what he's saying too. You know, there's a lot of people that buy based on speculation and, and, and they, it, granted, you might have some great data that you tap into, but I believe that cash flow, if you buy right, is going to be a consistent and it's going to continue to produce for you. Um, and the appreciation I think is like the icing on the cake, but, uh, nonetheless, I try to buy in a market that I believe is going up, and I understand that. So in this data that I'm about to give you, it, it, it basically says real estate is not a national market. There is no such thing as a national real estate market. Um, all real estate investing is local. Every local market is different. Uh, your success depends on your ability to correctly match your investing goals and strategies to local market cycles and act accordingly. Why? Because every local market in the U.S. moves according to its own unique rhythms and cycles. Sure, some big economic trends uh, like the 2008 crash had broad impact, but they affect every market differently. Did you know that there were dozens of markets that actually went up in the mid-2008 uh, to 2010 crash and dozens more that actually declined in that previous period of 2005 to 2007 boom years? So there are two ways to analyze any market. Um, it's by its fundamental attributes or by its technical charts. Um, with the advent of personal computing and the internet, the technical charts, uh, or uh, TA as it's called, has become the dominant methodology for predicting stock, bond, commodity, and current market cycles worldwide. TA is used by all major investment banks and international trading desks as the underlying basis for trillions of dollars in daily investment transactions. Uh, TA is visual, relying on supply and demand charts, because these charts also track the most important and most elusive driver of future price trends, market psychology. Now, granted, you can only look at um, what has already happened. You cannot, I mean, you can make projections. If you see an upward trend after you've had a, a downward trend, you can assume that that's going to keep going for a certain level and be able to recommend buys during that period. And around 2006, this is when Ken Wade's housing alerts, uh, I guess, first became publicly available. And this is a service that you pay so much a month to get his data and to tap into it and can look at markets all over, smaller markets as well as major markets. The data tools for implementing the technical or TA for local real estate markets uh, simply didn't exist at that time. And real estate investors at that time had to rely on old, outdated, and inaccurate fundamental analysis um, because there was no alternative. Um, there are hundreds of fundamental analysis factors that may or may not impact real estate prices for any given market during any particular time. Some of the popular factors that they look at are population, mortgage rate, uh, unemployment, and income levels. Less traditional things may be things like climate, vacancy, building permits, um, even gasoline prices. Historically, these and many other fundamental factors were once thought to be drivers of real estate prices. One only need look at, Texas, let's say, the Texas real estate market for proof that population isn't a good predictor of real estate values. For the two decades preceding 2010, Texas had some of the largest population gains, both percentage and total, but experienced relatively dismal real estate appreciation. Mortgage rates were once considered the primary of driver of real estate and the best predictor of future prices. The Fundamental theory was also shattered when mortgage rates fell to historic lows simultaneous with the last down cycle, the crash in 2008. 
So just so you know, uh, this this whole method of determination is based on charts that uh, show the annual appreciation of, or decline in real estate values over time. So the visual snapshots of supply and demand, the the TA relies on those charts because they accurately reflect what actually happened. Okay, again, projections are made based on what has already happened. And the fundamental factors uh, are also factored in there in these charts that uh, were tapped into by Ken Wade. So, and I think one of the key things that they look at too is um, they emphasize market psychology, one of the most powerful drivers of all, because real estate is so cyclical compared to the stock market. For example, relatively simple studies can be used to accurately track local markets using these charts and studies. Um, housingalerts.com deciphers the, the data into a, a couple of broad categories, market momentum and uh, the technical point scores. So I'm going to present this data. Keep in mind, you know, this is, this is focus, focusing on appreciation, which is um, certainly a way that you, you want to be able to buy. You want to buy an area that's, that's on the uptick as opposed to declining. I'm going to first take a look at the states, okay, the the top states based on their data, the best states to buy in. So I, I've got 11 here. I'm going to start uh, from 11 and count up, okay? So number 11, Florida. Number 10, Michigan. Number 9, Nebraska. Number 8, Texas. Number 7, Colorado. Number 6, Oregon. Number five, Rhode Island. Number four, Tennessee. Number three, Idaho. Number two, Utah. And number one, Washington. Now, I don't know if, and I'm talking Washington State there. Okay, this is a, a very, very interesting and telling chart. And I will tell you why, because the concentration seems the top three, Washington, Utah, Idaho, and then I will say number six, Oregon, are all in the northern west part of the United States. These are all states that are kind of concentrated together. There are some significant growth going on there. And there could be a lot of reasons why things are happening like that. You know, one of the things that uh, some people say is, you know, California, which is a very populous and a popular state, a lot of people are moving out of California and they're moving to surrounding states. So moving up to Oregon or Washington. Utah, Idaho is a natural move even to Nevada. But um, just looking at this, this list is very in interesting because then you have uh, Tennessee at number four, which um, was a little bit of a surprise to me. But yet I've, I've been tracking Tennessee, so I, I, I know what's happening in Memphis, which is uh, uh, seems like it's, it's kind of spiking up again. And um, also there's the sort of central and western Tennessee area that's pretty hot right now. Um, Rhode Island was a bit of a surprise at number five. Um, Colorado, Texas, again, you know, tech, Western states. Um, then you've got Nebraska, Midwest, um, and uh, Michigan. And it's interesting, we recently had a podcast on Detroit and investing in Detroit. There are some, some neat things going on there in Florida, number 11. Now I'm going to zero in on the actual cities, okay? And what's great about this data is it doesn't just look at m uh, major MSAs, uh, metropolitan statistical areas, um, you know, it's not just the big cities. There's some smaller cities here too, which I think are interesting um, because when we say Washington, well, what are we talking about Washington? And, you, and you'll see a number of Washington uh, cities here and areas that uh, are the best to invest in according to uh, this data from Ken Wade and Housing Alerts. Okay, I actually have a list of 32 uh, I'm not going to read all 32 because of the time factor here. I'm just going to give you the top 20. Um, if you want to get the full list of 32, then um, just uh, just go to our website. It's real easy to get to, olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog, and look for this episode here on the top uh, U.S. appreciation markets. Okay, so I'm going to start counting down from 20 here. Uh, you'll see a lot of these areas and some other areas that I didn't mention that were in the top uh, 11 states. Okay, starting at number 20, Kennewick and Richland, Washington area. 19, Palm Bay, Melbourne, Titusville, Florida. 18, 
Mount Vernon, Anna Cortez, Washington. 17. Lakeland, Winter Haven, Florida. 16. Eugene, Oregon. 15. Bremerton, Silverdale, Washington. Number 14. Salt Lake City, Utah. Number 13. Olympia, Turnwater, Washington. Number 12. Dallas, Plano, Irvine, Texas. Number 11. Ogden, Clearfield, Utah. Number 10. Albany, Oregon. Number 9. Deltona, Daytona Beach, Ormond Beach, Florida. Number 8. Nashville, Davidson, Murfreesboro, Franklin, Tennessee. Number 7. Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas. Number 6. Salem, Oregon. Number five, Bellingham, Washington. Number four, Longview, Washington. Number three, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Number two, Tacoma, Lakewood, Washington. And number one, Seattle, Bellevue, Everett, Washington. Well, I know that's quite a list and uh, a lot to, to, to think about here. It is very interesting to to see uh, you know these these specific pockets and uh, you know I guess you know I would just look at our number one Seattle Bellevue Everett. I mean Seattle is not a cheap place to buy. Um, it is very expensive, but um, like California, you you can buy as property values are going up, and you may spend six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars on a house. Um, but it's projected to go up to 800, 900,000 or a million. Um, and so I, you know, I, I get it in those, but I, I would, if I were buying in Washington, which I, which I'm really not, but if I were buying in Washington, I would look at some of these smaller areas and see what opportunities exist there. Now, uh, keep in mind, all this data is looking at the full housing market. So you're really looking mostly at single family homes and the sales of single family homes and uh, the data coming from that. Um, multifamily, um, yeah, there's going to be certain s- certain demand um, issues that are going to happen in, in both areas. So that, in other words, in a multifamily market, in a, in a single family market, there is going to be demand for rentals. There are population statistics that are there that are going to be good for both. Uh, but uh, multifamily does have some different needs in different areas that uh, aren't necessarily represented in these statistics. But I think overall, you're seeing appreciation go up, and um, and that uh, does impact a, a number of factors that uh, you also look at for multifamily. Well, that is my data here, and I and again. Take it for what it is. It's it's one particular organization's uh, study that they have shared, um, and uh, this is stuff that's readily available to anybody. But I just thought I'd bring it to you guys to look at as you are looking at uh, possibly buying out of state. Now there may be listeners here that are very happy with their own local market, and they're they know that area well, and they can invest uh, probably but better than a lot of people that are buying out of state because you know the area that you're closest to. Um, so this may not necessarily pertain to you unless you see that uh, some of the areas are close by to you and you might want to consider maybe broadening out or or maybe be encouraged if you are living in one of these areas. So anyway, that is it for today. I hope that uh, information is a valuable use to you. Please note, as I mentioned, everything I presented here, and I will have the full list of all of these uh, areas and cities and states um, in our show notes. So you can take a look at that and uh, and reference it as you will. Just look for the episode uh, that uh, talks about the, the top uh, U.S. appreciation uh, markets in the U.S. for 2018. So until next time, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Thanks again for listening. And may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.